in urban areas, we have a lot of hard surfaces like streets and parking lots and sidewalks and roofs. And when it rains in these hard surfaces, all the rainfall runs off, or about 95% of it. And it goes into things like gutters and storm drains, as you see there. We have an alternative here that is an engineered parking lot made out of grass and gravel. And in this parking lot, when it rains, about 60% of the rainfall soaks into the ground. Now we do have an overflow drain into the stormwater system, but that only gets water after a large period of rainfall or high intensity rainfall. We need to look at things that are more pervious, like the grass parking lots, the gravel parking lots, or even grassy swales to move water away. We can also look at non-curbed parking lots and streets and allow the water to uh, capture into bioinfiltration basins and soak some of that water into the ground. As rainwater washes off the hard surfaces and into the gutters and storm drains by gravity, it is routed then to the most common stormwater management device or flood management device, the stormwater detention pond that's behind this board fence here. A stormwater detention pond is a large dry pond that's constructed in almost any new development to capture the stormwater runoff which will fill up with the stormwater and then slowly seep out the outlet structure into the local drainage. This outlet rate of flow is equal to the rate of flow that would have happened prior to this subdivision being developed. This is to prevent flooding downstream. Compared to the dry detention pond that we saw earlier, this is what we call a stormwater retention pond. It is filled with water most of the time to a certain level, uh, but it functions in the same manner in that it captures the stormwater runoff and routes them into this pond. The pond then fills with water and then slowly overflows an outlet structure at a rate that mimics the pre-development runoff rate. This stormwater retention pond, as you can see, has been somewhat landscaped with cattails and is actually an amenity to the neighborhood, uh, which is called the preserve or a natural type of themed neighborhood. Well, the mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to build projects that reduce people's risk of flooding. There are a variety of projects that we build. One of them is right here on Sims Bayou. We widen and deepen our bayous to give them greater carrying capacity so that when we get a lot of rain, we can move that stormwater out to Galveston Bay as quickly as possible. We also excavate large stormwater detention basins next to our bayous so that when we start to get a lot of rain and water starts to rise in the bayous, that water will spill over and be safely stored into these basins, which essentially resemble large lakes when they're full. And when water in the bayou begins to recede, the water in the stormwater detention basin will drain through pipes by gravity back into the bayou when it's safe. And most people know we are prone to tropical storms and hurricanes. And also these thunderstorms that tend to drop tremendous amounts of rain in very short periods of time. We're also very flat here. If you took a six foot long pool table and put dimes under two of the legs, that essentially is the equivalent of our slope. We also have clay soils. They are very impermeable. They don't absorb a lot of storm water. One of the things that we hear from people is that when they find out that their home is not in a mapped floodplain, they assume that they are not at risk for flooding. The maps do not show all of our sources of flooding. A lot of times, uh, the, our storm sewers and our roadside ditches, they're not able to accommodate two and three inches of rain in an hour. And so people experience flooding from street flooding and water trying to reach the bio and it can't fast enough. So the last thing we want people to do is look up their address and find out they're not in a map floodplain and assume that they don't need flood insurance. 73,000 homes flooded during Tropical Storm Allison. 65% of the area was not in a mapped floodplain. We really encourage everybody to have flood insurance. 
flooding can occur even in instances where bayous and streams uh, do not come out of their banks. This localized flooding typically occurs in low-lying areas when the drainage infrastructure is inadequate to transmit the stormwater to the receiving channel. In a, in a heavy rainfall event, if you've got a series of culverts that are blocked, the rainwater is just going to build up in the ditches. Eventually, it'll overflow. The only place the water is going to go once it overtops the bank is toward those structures. Make sure this ditch stays clean, clear, doesn't silt up, and that the culvert openings are clear, that they're not stopped up by vegetation or, or accumulated debris. 